amen, to build up the saints of God to do the work of the ministry. Amen. Praise the Lord. Before I begin to read the scripture tonight, I wanted to give you uh, what God has placed on my heart for this upcoming year. One of the things that God has challenged me to, to do this year, as always, is to teach the word with simplicity so that understanding can take place. And so God told me that these series that I'm teaching will cause you to be a better you. Amen. So, so that's, that's the goal this year is for you to be a better you. Somebody say a better you. And so I just don't want you to hear the word of God. Amen. I, I really want you to, to apply the principles and the word that I, I teach this year, because I believe that this word will change your life forever. And so I challenge, challenge each and every one of you, those who are here in the sanctuary and those who are watching by way of all of our social media, that as you hear the word of God and apply the principles of the word of God, that if your life does not measurably change after hearing and doing the word this year, amen, then we all need to just shut this thing down. But I truly believe that if we just apply the word that we hear and do what God says, amen, we will have a better me this year, amen. And so, so I don't want you to be the same person after you hear this word. I want you to change. Amen. And so that's the goal this year is to cause change to happen in your life, that you will be a better you. Amen. You'll stop all the cussing. Stop all the fussing. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Be a better you. Amen. All right. Matthew chapter 16. Let's begin at verse number 13. Matthew 16, verse number 13. Look what it says. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, whom do men say that I, the son of man, am? And they said, some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias and other Jeremiah's are one of the prophets. He said unto them, but whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, blessed art thou Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood had not revealed it unto you, but my, but my father, which is in heaven. And I say unto, also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys to the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou loose shall be loose, loose in, on earth shall be loosed in heaven. So tonight I want to begin a new series entitled Identity Crisis. Amen? Identity Crisis. There are people who don't know who they are. Amen? And I want to go to the word of God to find out what God says about who we are. Amen. In order to be a better you, you need to know who you are. Amen. And the key to living the abundant life in Christ this year will be based upon you knowing who you are. Go to John chapter 10, John chapter 10. The key to living the abundant life in Christ is in knowing who you are. Amen. You got to know who you are. John chapter 10, look at verse number 10. John chapter 10, verse number 10. It says, the thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. I am come that you might have life, and that you might have it, what? More abundantly. The Amplified says, to the full, till it overflows, amen? And that's the plan of God for our lives, that, that, that he wants us to live in abundance, amen? He wants us to have the best in life. He wants us to be full till it overflows. Hallelujah. Amen. But the key to me living this abundant life, amen, is in knowing who I am. Now, there are four things that shape our belief system. Amen. Four things that shape our belief system. Number one is the environment we grew up in. If we're not careful, the environment that we grow up in will cause us to limit ourselves, amen, from God's best. Now, I grew up in the projects. Amen. And if I would allow the projects to define my ability and my possibilities, I would still be in the projects. Amen. I'd probably be a, a guy who would who would have been staying on somebody else's dime. Amen. 
but because I understood that I had to change how I thought uh, and change the environment that I was in, it changed my life forever. Amen. So, so the environment that I, I'm in will influence how I think. Not only that, but what important others have said about me and told me about my life. What did my mama tell me, amen? Did my mama encourage me to be the best that I could be? Hallelujah. Thirdly, the repetitious information that I receive, the repetitious information that I receive, it influences and shapes how I think. Amen? What do you hear over and over again? Now, if you listen to the word of God, the Bible says that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So if I'm going to be a better me this year, I have to continue to hear the word of God over and over and over again. Amen. And let the repetitious information shape how I think. And then finally, what I experience in life. Amen. Will shape how I think. Amen. How, what I experience will shape how I think. Hallelujah. Now, I, tonight I really don't have the quality time to go through all the scriptures that I have here. Amen. To talk about the identity crisis. Now, when it comes down to, to, to looking at the word of God, if you Luke chapter 15 is a very good scripture to find lost stuff, stuff that don't understand its purpose and value. Amen. And so when I look in Luke, I find through the first seven verses, it talks about a lost sheep, a sheep that gets away from the 90 and nine. And, and, and the owner of the sheep goes looking for that one sheep. And the Bible says that once he finds it, he starts rejoicing. Amen. But watch this now. That sheep is void of proper direction. So when people don't know who they are, they are void of direction. But guess what? Jesus is looking for you. Praise the Lord. Amen. So you got to understand that my father, the father God is looking for you. Amen. Then, then verses 8 through 10 talks about a lady who, uh, who lost her co coin. She had 10 coins, but, but she lost one of them. Amen. But, but she, she moves everything around and, and shifts everything around just to find that one coin. Amen. And so in the, in the coin situation, you got to understand the coin was designed for a purpose. Amen. And so when we don't understand our purpose, we'll drift aimlessly in the earth. Amen. Trying to let somebody else define who we are. So just like the woman found the coin, you got to find your purpose. You got to know what your purpose is. Now, on our mobile app, there's some nuggets for expansion for this year. Every week, I, I'm, I'm going to put up a new nugget so that you can go through that nugget every week and just start saturating yourself with the word of God. And in every one of those, you have an a expansion prayer, an expansion petition, and also an expansion of uh, where well, you have to declare something. Amen. So now you have to take advantage of, of those things, because guess what? In order for you to know your purpose. You have to know why you exist. Why did God bring you here at this time? You are not a mistake based upon your parent. Amen. But you are in the purpose and plan of God. But you have to know what your purpose is. Just like the woman found the coin. She said, come and rejoice with me. Then there was the son who, uh, who wanted to go out and live a righteous life. Amen. In Luke chapter 15, verse 11 through 24. He was confused about his authority. Amen. He tells his daddy, daddy, give me what, what belongs to me. He, he gets all the stuff, leaves home, go lives a riotous life, and then finds himself in a hog pen. Amen. But watch this now. The Bible says he came to himself. He figured out, hey, man, I should not be in a hog pen. Amen. I'm better than this. Glory to God. And so many people right now have come out of an old year into a new year, but they got to realize if you're in a hog pen, come to yourself. Amen. Yo, daddy, you, you got to know who your daddy is. Amen. He said, my daddy has more than this stuff. I shouldn't be eating with the swines. He said, I'll get up, clean myself up, go back home, tell my daddy I've sinned before God and before you. Amen. Just make me a servant. But watch this now. The daddy seen him a far way off. Amen. And ran upon him and, and hugged him and kissed him and say, my son who was dead now is alive. He was lost. But now he's found. Now watch this. We got to understand that even if I messed up last year. Amen. Even if I went my own way. We got a daddy that loves us. Amen. And watch this now. He, he will celebrate you when you come home. Glory to God. Amen. But then there are those, there are those in the household. Like the brother, amen. Luke chapter 15, verse 25 through 32. 
Amen. He was incapable of handling his relationship because he got upset when the younger brother came home. He told his daddy, daddy, I've been here all alone and you never threw me a party. He said, son, look, you had access to everything I had. Amen. But when you're incapable of having relationships with others, amen, because you don't know who you are. Ah, see, 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 that's 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 the issue. See, you go from one broken relationship to another broken relationship. Why? It's not because the other person It's because of you. Because the common den the denominator in every relationship that you've been in is you. Praise the Lord. Amen. But you got to know who you are. Amen. Now, now here's some things. Here's some things. People will make mistakes when they, when they don't know who they are. Amen. They will make undesired adjustments in their lives to make others like them when they don't know who they are. Amen. So, so watch this now. I, I will, I will conform to who you think I should be because I don't know who I am. Amen. Huh. Watch this now. Go to Numbers chapter 13. Numbers chapter 13. You'll start thinking that what others think about you is who you really are. The children of Israel did not talk to those people in the promised land. They just got the evidence and came back. The 12 spies, you know, remember 12 spies? They, they, they go, Moses say, go into the promised land and see that it's a land flowing with milk and honey. But they had a poor self image of themselves, so they could not overcome the giants in the land. It was all because of self image. It was all because identity crisis. Because if they would have took what God said about them versus what they thought about themselves, they would have said, just like Joshua and Caleb, let's go get the land. Let's go, let's go get it right now because God, we're well able. <laughs> Jesus, amen. Numbers, we're just going to look at verse number 33. Numbers chapter 13. Verse number 33. Numbers 13. Look at verse number 33. Watch this now. Watch what it says. And there we saw the giants, the son of Anak, which come of the giants, and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so were we in their sight. What you say? They never talked to those folk. But yet they, because they thought they thought about them as grasshoppers. So that's how they thought of themselves, amen? Mm -mm -mm. Now, now watch this now. When people don't know who they are, Sister Aline, They'll laugh at negative comments, amen, just to fit in. Amen. You'll let somebody call you out your name just so, just, and, and you won't say a thing about it because I'm just trying to fit in. Mm -mm -mm. Then, then you'll start name dropping. I, you know, I know certain folk. Well, they ought to be saying that about you. I know her. When you know, see, when you know, when you have confidence in who you are, amen, you don't have to name drop with anybody. Ooh, Lord Jesus. Neither do you have to take artificial stimuli in order to be somebody. See, Sister so Pauline, when, 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 when people don't know who they are and they start using artificial stimuli, amen, they become Superman. Yeah, yeah, I'm telling you. Because now they something something had to boost them up to be somebody. But see, when you have the peace of God, oh Lord Jesus, Amen. The peace that surpasses all understanding, the peace that He says I've given to you, Amen. You don't have to use artificial stimuli, Amen. Hallelujah, praise the Lord, Amen. Now, now watch this. Who who told you about who you are? Have you ever asked that question? Who told you about who you are? Amen. Now, go over to, watch this now. Go to Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. The power to define is the power to determine one's destiny in life. Amen. If I, if, I, if I allow somebody to define me, they control me. Amen. If I let them define me, they control me. Because the power to define is the power to determine one's destiny in life. Yeah, right. Amen. 
So who told you who you are? Have you ever asked that question? Amen? And, and if they told you who you are, did they tell you the truth? Or, or were they using fake news? <laughs> Glory to God. Amen? Now, number one, self can, you can allow yourself to define you. Okay? Watch it now. But you are incapable of proper definition of defining yourself. Romans chapter 10. Let me show you why. Romans chapter 10. Look at verse number one. Romans chapter 10, verse number one. Look what it says. Brother, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. Five bad them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. So, so watch this now. Because people want to establish their own righteousness. Amen. Their own standard of living. Amen. You don't have, you don't have the right to define who you are. Because you're going to define you based upon how you feel today. Amen. So, so watch this now. So I cannot allow myself to define me. Neither can I allow somebody else to define me. Because if I allow another man to define me, watch this now, they're going to define me what they want me to be. Mm, mm -mm. So I have to go back to the maker of the, th of the thing, amen? Go to Genesis chapter 1. I have to allow God to define me. Only he has the right to define me, amen? Only the maker of the thing has the right to define how that thing ought to operate. Amen? Okay, for instance... If you have a certain make of car, give me a car name, a Chevy. Ain't no sense in me taking a Chevy to a Ford dealership to try to fix the Chevy. Number one, they don't have the parts for that. Amen. Two, they're not, they not certified, amen, to fix on a Chevy like they are on a Ford because they are a Ford dealership. Amen. Why is it then that we allow another man, amen, to, to try to define us when they didn't make us? Amen. I got to go back to the manufacturer and allow him to say, this is how your car should operate. Okay, okay, watch this, watch this. In every new car, every new car, in the glove box is the owner's manual. And they have everything about that car. If you want to know how to turn the blinker on, look in the manual. If you want to know how to do this, that, or the other, what? Just look in the manual. Page so, so and so. Go to the index, find what you're looking for, and boom, it's right there. Well, when it comes down to us, Sister Porter, we got to go back to the Word of God and find out what, what did God say? And how did God say I should operate? Genesis chapter 1. Look at verse number 26, Genesis chapter 1, verse number 26. Watch this now. Watch, watch what he says here. Genesis chapter 1, verse number 26. Look what he says. Hallelujah. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fire of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth. And over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God what? Blessed them. And God said unto them. Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. And subdue it. And have dominion over the fish of the sea. And over the fowl of the air. And over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Now, now something just jumped out at me. The world said. That people of color are a cursed people. Have you ever heard that? Amen. That people of color, that they are a cursed people. But I just read here, and God what? Blessed them. Who is the them that God blessed? Amen. Everybody that God has created, God says, I bless you. 
So, so I cannot allow man to define me as being cursed when God says, I've already blessed you. Amen. I've blessed you, watch this now, and I've given you a purpose. Mm -mm -mm. Amen. Okay, go to Psalms 8. Go to Psalms 8. Psalms 8, look at verse number 4. Psalms 8, verse number 4. We got to return back to the maker of the thing and let him define us. Amen. So I'm not cursed. I'm blessed. Amen. I've been, I've been designed to function in authority. He told me to have dominion over everything that he made. Amen. So, 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 so watch this. Psalms 8, look at verse number 4. Watch what they say. What is man that thou art mindful of him? And the son of man that thou visitest him? For thou hast made him a little lower than the angels and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Thou madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put how much stuff? All things where? Under his feet. Under his feet. So God says, the, the angels had to ask the question, what, what is this creation that you made called man? Why are you so mindful of him? Amen. Why are you visiting him? See, see, we are a, uh, God, God, we are his, his workmanship, the Bible calls us. Yeah. Created in Christ Jesus, born a new, amen. Who, Lord Jesus, amen. Now watch this now. So, so God, so, so the question was asked, what is man that you're mindful of him? So, so God's intent for Adam is the same intent for us. Yeah. Amen. Number one, God wanted a creature, a creation, watch this now, so that he could fellowship with God. Mm -mm -mm. That's what God wanted. God, God always intended for man to, to fellowship with him. And so to the extent that we spend time with God, watch this now, we are part of our created purpose. Mm -mm -mm. Number two, God wants us to represent him in the earth. He calls us ambassadors for Christ. In other words, we are his representation here on the earth. Just like Jesus came to be the, the visible father figure on the earth. Because Jesus said this, if you've seen me, you've seen the father. Amen. So now we, we should be saying, if you see me, then you see Jesus. <laughs> Glory to God, amen. That's, that's good, that's good. That, because, watch this now, the Bible says that we are being conformed to the image of the Son. Amen? So if Jesus can declare that if you see me, you've seen the Father, then when people see you, they should be seeing Jesus. And is that the picture that they're seeing is the question. Amen? The next thing that God tells us, our purpose our created purpose is that we ought to multiply and replenish the earth. Multiply and replenish. We ought to be creating little yous, amen? Amen. There ought to be somebody that acts like you, talks like you, amen? Because we ought to be reproducing in the kingdom. Amen. Now, now we got to make sure, we got to make sure uh, that, that, that there's, a movie, there's a movie coming out out called replicas all right that's coming out in a couple of days and uh I, I seen the i seen the uh uh the, the uh the, the trailer and the trailer said it, it shows that this guy reproduces his family and it looks just like his family what are you reproducing do they look just like you we we ought to have some kind of birthmark on us that makes us look like our father. Well, people won't question, is, 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 that, is, that, is that his son? <laughs> when they look at you, they ought to see that you're part of the family of God. The fourth thing that God says is his intent for mankind is that we would take care of the things of God. That we would be good stewards over his stuff. And I, I say that over his stuff. Hallelujah. Because the stuff we have, Sister Mary Jane, it don't belong to us. And when we have, when we get mental separation, that what I have is not mine. 
I'm God just I'm just proving to God that I can be trusted with more. Amen. See, when God when God sees that that he can trust you with stuff. That when he calls on you, you're willing to give the stuff that he gave you, then God will give you more of the stuff. Amen. And then final thing is that God wants us to be an example of the lordship of, of God here in the earth. In other words, he wants us to obey. Amen. See, when we made Jesus Lord, that means he has the right to tell us what to do. Amen. And so, so we, we, we don't, we, we ain't fight with him when he tells us to go here or go there or do this or do that. No, he, we got to obey. If you be willing and obedient, the Bible says, you're going to eat the good of the land. But I got to be willing and obedient. Mm. Amen. So when I look at my created purpose, one, I need to fellowship with God. Two, I need to represent God. Three, I need to multiply and replenish the earth. Four, I need to care for the things of God. And number five, I need to be an example of obedience in the earth. Amen. Now go over to 1 Corinthians 14, 1 Corinthians chapter 14. It was never God's intent for mankind to be confused about who they are. It was never God's intent. You, you see these people now, I don't know who I am. I don't know if I'm a girl or a boy. Okay, well, that's easy. What equipment you got? Hey, man, you don't have to, you don't have to look too far. What equipment you got? That, I mean, you, you, you know what you are when you look at your equipment. But it was never God's intent for man to be confused. You know why? Because the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 14, that God is not the author of confusion. So if there's any confusion, it's not of God. Amen. So, so, so we got to get this understanding of who we are and not be confused about it. Amen. <laughs> when I look at, when I look at man's state before and after Christ, man, it changes everything. Go to Ephesians chapter uh, two, Ephesians chapter two. Amen. Amen. Ephesians chapter two. Ephesians chapter number two. Let's begin at verse Number one, Ephesians chapter two, verse number one. Ephesians chapter two, verse number one. Watch this. You ready? Yep. And you hath he quickened, this year before state, who were dead in trespasses and sin, wherein time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. The spirit that worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had convers our conversations in time past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. In other words, he said, look, none of y'all clean. Amen. None of y'all clean. All y'all used to do something in your past. And watch this now. It was because of the lust that was in you. <laughs> Amen. No, no, no. As a matter of fact, Romans says it this way. All y'all have sin. It comes short of the glory of God. Then he says, there is none righteous. No, not one. No, no, no. So don't get it twisted. Amen. You are not an angel. Amen. All of us have messed up. And some of us have messed up more than others. And we got a reason to say, praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Because if it wasn't for him, amen, that delivered us and brought us out of darkness into the marvelous light, where would we be? <laughs> oh, Jesus. Amen. I'm preaching myself happy tonight. So, so let's continue. Let's continue. But, okay. So now that was my before state. Amen. I was following the lust of my flesh, fulfilling the desires of my flesh and my mind. I was, a, I was a child that was disobedient. Then it says, but God, verse four, who is rich in mercy. I, I think, I, I think, man, the Bible says that his mercies are what? New what? What you say? That new every, what? Every, every morning I got a new mercy. I don't have to depend on yesterday's mercy for today. 
because I got a new mercy. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, had quickened us together with Christ, by grace ye are saved, and had raised us up together, and made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ. Look at your after state. He says, by grace you're saved. Watch this now. He says, then you have to look at where you're sitting at. Okay. The Bible talks about Jesus being the head of the body. And we as members of, of, of the body of Christ. So, so if you don't see yourself positioned right, you would think that you're just a person here on earth. Amen. But how God sees you right now, not in a sweet by and by, is that you are seated in heavenly places. You're seated, seated right next to God because we are the body of Christ. We're seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus that in the age to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are you saved through faith, verse 8 says, and that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God, not of works lest any man should boast. Verse number 10. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God had before ordained that we should what? Walk in them. Let me read that out of the Amplified, verse 10. For we are God's own handiwork, his workmanship, recreated in Christ Jesus, born anew, that we may do those good works which God predestined, planned beforehand for us, taking paths which he prepared ahead of time, that we should walk in them, living the good life which he prearranged and made ready for us to live. What you say? So you mean to tell me, Cynthia, that God already looked when I was going to come. And he already put a path and a plan ahead of time so that I could walk in that thing, so that I could live the, the good life. Not, not a bad life, but the good life right now. But if I don't know who I am, amen, I will resist the very plan of God and live beneath my privilege. <laughs> My father is a planner. Amen. And, and, and he didn't wait for me to get here right now. He prepared ahead of time. Amen. Okay. Okay. Watch this now. Even though Lady Gwen went through the health challenge the other day, a few days ago, God had already pre-planned some things. Who would have known that when we were in the hospital, that I would bump into a doctor that knew me? Who, who was a specialist in what I needed him to be a specialist in. Amen. He was on duty. Now, this is, this is New Year's Eve. Amen. What doctor works on New Year's Eve? The one that God had pre-planned ahead of time to meet me at the hospital to take care of my wife? Amen. Glory to God. So when I walked up there, he said, hey, Pastor, how you doing? I said, hey, Doc, how you doing? He said, what you doing up here? Told him what the symptoms were. He said, oh, okay. He said, I, 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 I'll, I'll go look at a film for her. And then he, sent the, he, he picked up the phone. After he observed the, the, the MRI, the, the data from the, from the, from the uh, whatever she got done. He called downstairs and says, hey, look, I want y'all to take good care of her. And so when we got back downstairs and all the nurses were coming up to, to Lady Gwen, they said, well, the doc already told us to take care of you. Every nurse, every assistant that came up to us say, look, we already got the word. But God prearranged that thing. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Go to go to first John chapter three. Watch this now. You got to see your after state. See, I got to, I got to, see, the reason why I'm starting this year to talk about a better you and talking about you have understanding your identity and not having an identity crisis 
is so that when I know who I am, ain't no sense of being in a crisis. Amen. Ain't no sense of being in no crisis. No, because I know who I am. First John, first John chapter three. First John chapter three. Watch this now. Look at verse number one. First John chapter three. Verse number one. Behold, what manner of love the father had bestowed upon us. <laughs> he, look, look what he say. Look. Look at how much God loves you. That we should be called what? The sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not. Okay, okay. Remember now, remember, I said earlier, there's no way we should be allowing the world to define us because they don't even know us. Amen. They have no idea of the magnitude of who we are. He says, he says, he says, he says, how much love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be what? Just like him, for we shall see him as he is, and every man that hath this hope in him purified himself even as he is pure. He said, man. You really don't, you really, you, re, you really haven't got to the place of really who you are. Because, oh my God, when we see Jesus face to face, man, we're going to be just like him. Oh my God, we're going to be just like him. So look, look, you might as well practice right now being him. So, 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 so when your storm comes, just like Jesus went up and said, peace be still. You can tell your storm, peace be still, because you're going to be just like him. Glory to God. Amen. Glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory. See, see, because my potential, my potential and your potential in life is directly linked to me knowing who I am in Christ. My potential. Amen. Jesus said, the works that I do you're going to do greater works. So my potential is not based upon the level of education I have. It's not based upon how much money I have in the bank. Amen. It's not based upon what side of town I live on. My potential is based upon, do you know who you are? Amen. Do you know who you are? Mm -mm -mm. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord Jesus. And see, your life, your identity is a matter of a choice. Amen. And not a matter of chance. The life I live right now is about my choices. Amen. It is it's not. See, see, the world talks about luck. Amen. We don't experience luck as believers. Amen. We experience the promises that God has made about us, his children. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Woo, praise the Lord. Okay. Now, remember earlier we talked, we talked about the children of Israel. And the, the 12 spies that went into the promised land, got the clusters of grapes. Went back, showed Moses. Moses, it is a land flowing with milk and honey. Amen. But 10 of the spies says, but they're, they're, they're giants over there. The sons of Anak and the, the, these folk live over there and those folk live over there. And, and, and Joshua and Caleb say, look, I'm going to make a different choice than what they're making. The choice they're making is that they, they have this inferior complex. But we're going to make a choice that we know who we are. We ready to go kill some giants. Let's go get it right now. Right now, you in my way, you in my land. God already promised it. I'm going to take it. Amen. But it was a choice they made. It was a choice not to get in fear. Amen. It was a choice to know this is who I am. I'm a giant killer. David had, look, okay, okay. David, little bitty old scrungy little boy, minding his business in the sheepfold. His daddy say, go take your brother something to eat. 
He gets out there and hears this giant talking trash about his God. Everybody else is in fear. Nobody wants to go fight the giant. As a matter of fact, Goliath said, hey, listen, we all don't have to die. Amen. You pick one guy from your camp and I'll, I'll be the fighter from my camp. And if, if whoever wins, that's y'all going to serve us or we going to serve you. And David said, say, I'll, I'll choose to go fight the giant while everybody else is scared. And it was because and based upon his relationship with God. David said, uh, let me think, let me think, let me think. I remember how God delivered me out of the, the mouth of the lion and the hand of the bear. And what is this uncircumcised Philistine that's talking trash about my God? David said, I'm a giant killer. David said, today I get ahead. <laughs> Y'all didn't get it. I get ahead. He's going to cut the red head off. Praise the Lord. Amen. Watch this now. Okay. Now, that was in chapter 17. But in chapter 16, something happened to David. Amen? For him to know who he is. Okay. The prophet goes to David's house to anoint the next king. David is still outside minding the sheep. Of course, they go down the line trying to find the right king. And, and God tells the prophet, whoever the oil flows on, that's the one. So he brought all of his sons before the prophet and, and the oil did not run. Until the prophet says, is there another? Do you have another? Do you have somebody or somebody just, I, I know, I know what God said. There got to be somebody in your house that this oil got to flow on. He said, yeah, go get David. So now David finds out his destiny in life. You're going to be the next king. So by the time he shows up with Goliath, he already know I'm anointed for this thing. <laughs> so, so, so because he had revelation knowledge of who he was, Clint, by the time he got to the fight, by the time he got to the fight, watch this now. Oh, no, no, no. I, I ain't, I ain't going to lose tonight. Okay, so, so when we know, when we have revelation knowledge of who we are, when we face a fight and we face a giant, we got to, look, I've been anointed for this. <laughs> I, I cannot lose, man. I, I can't, I cannot lose. Not tonight. Okay, okay. All right, I'm getting all excited. Watch this, watch this. Every now and then, Pauline, I like to watch a boxing match. And I get a, I get a, I get a spiritual revelation from the fighters in the ring. And I'm, I'm watching all the people around the thing just to see how, in the natural, how things work. So, of course, there's two combatants. So then God says, okay, one is you and the other one is the enemy, your adversary. And in every fight, there's always a referee. I said, okay, 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 God, show me, show me, show me the revelation. He said, don't you know that the person who's refereeing the fight is your big brother, Jesus? And he will never allow the devil to, to knock you out. Y'all gonna get this revelation. Then, then he showed me, he says, every time the fighter goes back to the corner after the round is over, there's always somebody in the, in the corner there to refresh him. And the Holy Spirit said, he said, that's me. I, I'm the one that's always refreshing you. Amen. Giving you new strength. Amen. Causing this anointing to come on you. Then, 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 Denise, I, I look around the ring and I, I see some judges sitting around the ring who are judging the fight. Then, then God said, that's me. I'm the judge. And look, I've already marked the card where you win. <laughs> so no matter what the devil tries to do to you, you will always win. Uh-huh. Okay. Just so that, just so that you see it in scripture, second Corinthians, go to that second Corinthians. Chapter 2, amen, 2 Corinthians chapter 2, we're going to look at verse number 14, 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse number 14, so when I know who I am, amen, no matter what my fight is, I know I always win, <laughs> praise the Lord, all right, 2 Corinthians chapter 2, look at verse number 14, now thanks be to God, which always what? 
causes me to triumph in Christ. So I look, I always win. Somebody say I always win. That see when you know who you are, you know you always win. Amen. Ain't no sense of you crying in your milk, staying up all night, worrying about this and worrying about that. No, 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 baby, go to sleep because I always win. When I get up in the morning, I'm a win. I win today. Every day I win today. No matter what the news I get, I win. You know, I had to, I, I had to, I had to remind myself today, Sister Porter, that every delay works in my favor. See, what the world wants you to do is look at, you, as the, the, at the delay as God saying no. And God said, no, I didn't say no. Amen. It might be a delay, but it's working in your favor. Amen. That's right. I, what you say, Sister Porter? I'm perfecting the work that I, 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 I made for you. So, so watch this now. So, so I, I wake up, I win. Because I got my brother, who is the, who is the uh, referee. I got the Holy Ghost in my corner, who's refreshing me. And then at the end of the fight, I know the daddy going to give me the, the, the win because the referee going to go hold my arm up. And the winner is. Okay, Romans chapter 8, Romans chapter 8. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Watch this, Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, watch this now. Romans chapter 8, uh-huh. Yeah, that's where I'm going. That's where I'm going. Romans chapter 8. Uh-huh. Look at verse. Watch this now. Ah. Ah. Watch this now. Romans chapter 8. Yeah. Let's start at uh, verse number 31. We're going to go from 31 all the way down to verse 39. Verse 31. I, I know that y'all y'all who watching on, on, on your phones right now, you say, why that's that in the notes? Why that's that in the notes? It ain't in the notes. It ain't in the notes. Don't, don't you try to find it. It ain't in the notes. Well, look what it says. What shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us what? How many things? How many things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justified. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercessions for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. Through him that loved us. For I am persuaded mm, that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing. Amen. Oh, Lord Jesus. Watch this now. But I got to know who I am. Amen. I cannot have an identity crisis. Amen. It's when I know who I am. Amen. That I could be a better me. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. But I got to stop tonight because I am out of time. Give God a big hand of praise. Amen. Amen.